These are testimonies of women and men from across South Sudan who have survived conflict-related sexual violence. They are stories of struggle and violence, yet some of them give us hope. Many of the survivors kept fighting stigma, desperation and rejection. They did not give up in the face of hardships. The first testimony from a woman survivor gives us a glimpse into the stigma surrounding this horrific act and what those who managed to escape from abductions face, even after succeeding to return. There is also hope in this testimony as the survivor keeps going and appeals to those in her surroundings to not stigmatize her. When I returned from the bush, I wasn't welcomed well. I was abandoned and my relatives called me the wife of men men. Even my old friends, we grew up together. They never liked me and even called me the wife of men men. I would always feel sad. The kid I brought from the bush, people never liked it as well. I appealed to my relatives to leave out the past as I didn't willingly go to the bush. Let them speak good words to me and avoid hurtful words. I appealed to all community members and even the chiefs to avoid saying hurtful words to those of us who found ourselves in the challenge of abduction. I appeal to the organizations to come with conscious awareness raising in which they educate us with things that take our minds away from the past experiences and help us live a new life. Let churches and people pray for us for our continuous healing. The next testimony from a health worker narrates the extent of violence that survivors face and yet get little or no sustained support. This is a painful story of a 16-year-old victim who has a cognitive disability. She succumbed to rape and violence. I noticed a swarm of flies coiling around a human figure, so I went closer and checked. It was the body of a girl dumped in the area. She looked so pale, dried out by the sun with cracked lips. I felt her pulse. I realized she was still alive, barely, but still alive. Maggots were already eating her while she was still alive. There was swelling and bruising on her body as well. At the hospital, they found that she was raped, maybe by more than one person since two pieces of condoms were found inside her vagina. The girl stayed alive for about two weeks. Each day, she was getting weaker. When she died after about two weeks, we arranged her burial. This doesn't only happen to women. Often men end up bearing the trauma alone because of the stigma and the patriarchal concepts of masculinity surrounding sexual violence against them. A male survivor recounts. I did not see any doctors about my case, even though I was in extreme pain after the incident, because I was ashamed and afraid of what people would say. For the physical pain, I was only taking paracetamol. Until now, the incident is still giving me nightmares, and every time I think of what was done to me, I feel weak and sick. I'm convulsing as if I have a high fever. Here is the story of another male survivor. I did not expect such a thing to happen to me, but I cannot even tell anyone about it. Not even my family. No one will treat me like a man again if they know. The incident humiliated me so much. I was treated like less than even an animal. Every time I think about what happened, I feel very angry, like I want to kill all of the men who did this to me. This last testimony is from a minor girl who despite the violence and stigma, did not give up. When I was out of the hospital and went back to my village, my life became more difficult. My neighbors were talking about me and boys were laughing at me. The worst part was when my father told me, you are already spoiled by those rebels and no longer have value to me. So do not expect me to lend anything for you. You must take care of yourself now. You should be grateful I'm still letting you stay in my house. For me, to continue my studies, I sell cassava leaves at the market and in town and try to save as much as I can to pay my school fee.